Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x squared minus y squared equals 9 and xy equals 3. I'm going to show you the solutions from alpha at the end and also show you a graph. So, I kind of thought about this problem and see if I could solve it in different ways. So, I'm going to go ahead and present two solutions, but the first one is... Okay, let me show you what it looks like. So my first solution looks like this. Since x squared y minus y squared is a difference of two squares, I can write it as x plus y times x minus y is equal to 9. And I'm hoping that you know this identity. If you subtract x plus y squared and x minus y squared, you get 4xy. Because 2xy and 2xy uh, add it together and everything else cancels out. So I try to use this because I do know that xy is equal to 3, so this becomes 12, and this gives me another system. So I wanted to call this A and I wanted to call this B. You could also call it S and D for sum and difference. So this gives me AB equals 9 and A squared minus B squared equals 12. But guess what? I kind of got a very similar system where I have the difference of two squares and the product, so that, that did not really seem to help. Do you think there's another way to do this? Let me go ahead and show you the second method, and then you'll let me know. So the second method is the one that worked well. So again, the equations are x squared minus y squared equals 9, and xy equals 3. So here's what I did. I isolated the y from the second equation, so wrote the y as 3 over x, and then substituted, right? That's pretty much straightforward method of solving things, right? You just substitute. So replace y with 3 over x, square it, and this gives you x squared minus 9 over x squared equals 9. At this point, you can use substitution. So let's go ahead and set x squared equal to t. This gives us t minus 9 over t equals 9. Multiply everything by t. And then put everything on the same side. So this becomes a quadratic equation. Solve it using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 81 plus 36, which is 117. Divide by 2. 117 is... I think 13 times 9, right? Yes. So the square root of 9 is going to be a 3. So this is 9 plus minus 3 root 13 and all over that too. Okay. So that's the t values. Those are the t values. But t is x squared. So let's set this equal to x squared. From here we get two separate equations like x squared is this. And x squared is the conjugate of this. Let's uh, go with this one first. How do you find x from here? You take the square roots, but there are two numbers. you got to remember this. There are two numbers whose square equals this number. And one of them is going to be the square root of this number. I don't think you can denest it in a nice way. I mean, it can be denested, but not uh, in a nice manner. And the other solution is just going to be the opposite. Because if you square negative a and a, you get the same thing, right? Okay, so those are the solutions, and they're valid because the numbers inside the radicals are positive. Is that important? Yes. Let's take a look at the second uh, scenario. So we'll go with the minus sign. x squared equals 9 minus 3 root 13 over 2. Now, if you square 9, you get 81. If you square 3 root 13, you get 117. So this is the square root of 81. This is the square root of 117. So obviously, this is a negative number, which means x must be complex, right? But easy. For example, how would you solve if you had x squared equals negative 4? You would just write it as x equals plus minus 2i. So you kind of have to think about the positive number, square root it, and then put an i next to it, so on and so forth. So I can do the following then. From here, x becomes the square root of... 3 root 13 minus 9 over 2, which is the opposite of our negative number. This is positive, so this is a real number, multiplied by i, and do not forget to put the 
plus minus sign because there are two numbers whose square equals this number okay great so we got four solutions two of them are real two of them seem to be complex right okay let's go ahead and take a look at the values from wolfram alpha and then we're going to be looking at a graph and we'll finish with that all right ready let's go ahead and check it out So here's the result from Wolfram Alpha. Obviously, I did not find the y values. I was being lazy, but easy. You just plug it in and find the y values. As you can see, all the values are given. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish with that. So here's the graph of two functions, or should I say relations? One of them is x squared minus y squared equals 9. That's a hyperbola. And the other one is xy equals 3. That's also a hyperbola. Isn't that interesting? The intersection of two hyperbolas at two points, I marked one of them for you. As you can see here, those are the x and y values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.